All right, hello everyone. So we want to talk about regression today. Um, so regression is about understanding relationship between variables. We want to define these relationships between the variables. And often we do this by setting up an equation that connects these variables together. And this helps us do a lot of things, such as predicting uh, future values or predicting values between data points. So in a sense, regression is about quantifying or setting up a model for the relationship between these variables. Now, I've got a data set here with me in front, and the, we have x and y variables, the independent and the dependent variables, uh, which are rainfall and umbrellas sold. Now, the rainfall in a particular city tends to have an impact on the number of umbrellas sold on that day in that city. So this is what makes the rainfall as an independent variable and has an effect on the number of umbrellas sold, which is why umbrellas sold is the dependent variable. Now, I could visualize this uh, right away by using a scatter plot to have a look at the uh, distribution of the data. Now, and this tells me that with higher um, amount of rainfall on x-axis, you could see there's a trend that you have greater number of umbrellas sold on the y-axis. Now this is one way to visualize this and that's fine, but what I could do here is head over to add chart elements, include a trend line, and come up with a linear trend line. What that really does here is it sets up, and if I could double click this trend line, it sets up these, these options right here for me. It sets up this trend line, which is basically giving me a line of best fit. Now, I could use different lines, uh, different um, options here that I see here. For example, logarithmic would go ahead and formulate a logarithmic line of best fit. I could also use a polynomial here with different orders to get a good fit of this line. It seems to be overfitting with higher orders. So reduce these orders and get a good trend of this um, this data, right? There's also power and then there's moving average. I'm going to stick with linear to basically have one line that defines how this data is distributed. If I scroll down, I see other options such as set intercept and display equation on chart. That's the one I'm looking for, the equation. Now notice this is the equation for this uh, regression line that we see, the line of best fit. And I am going to go ahead and increase the font size for this. Uh, I'll color it to black. Okay, so this is the equation that connects all these data points on the x-axis, the independent variable rainfall with the dependent variable umbrella sold on y-axis. So 0 0.45 times x, the rainfall, minus the y-intercept, 19.074. That gives me the number of umbrellas sold Y. This is the equation for this line. So this is one way to capture the relationship using this equation by representing this data using this trend line. We also have R squared that we could display on our chart, which is the, a measure our goodness, measure of uh, goodness of fit. So how good is this line um, capturing all of these data points? That is R squared. Now, this is one way to understand regression, but there's also another way to do regression and come across this equation of the line in, in Excel. And for that, I'm going to head over to another data set, which is the interest rates home prices data set. Now, again, we have interest rate percentage and median home prices for different interest rates. There is an obvious relationship here too. Um, with lower interest rates, you should expect the cash flow to be uh, pretty much available to people and that should allow people to invest and that naturally creates a demand in the real estate which drives the home prices upwards. So we should expect a trend for lower interest rates having higher uh, median home prices. So again, I'm going to visualize this first, just for good measure, get a scatter plot and have a linear trend line set up. So 
So lower interest rates uh, do see a higher home price. So the, the, the trend kind of uh, checks out. And let's just have a linear trend line to just to get my trend line options. Right here, so it's a linear line, that's fine. But I'm more interested in the equation on the chart. Here it is. Going to increase the font size for this. All right, so I can see this equation on the chart. But there's another way we could do this in Excel. We could come across this uh, this exact same relationship equation of the line in Excel um, by using the regression option here in data. What we can see here is data analysis tab. And this allows us to choose regression as a means of data analysis. We hit OK. And then we fill in these values. For example, what is the Y variable? What is the Y range that we are interested in? So this is our dependent variable, right? From median home prices all the way to this last data point. If I hold the shift key to select all of this from C2 to C18, notice C2 includes the label, right? Which is why I'm going to check the labels option here. Now, the next thing is the X range, the independent variable, which is the interest rate percentage, right? So again, hold the shift key, click the last uh, cell, and this is how I can feed my data in. And I'm also going to specify where to output the regression results. Uh, I would uh, have it here in this cell. So, and there are a bunch of other options. I could specify constant interval. By default, it's 95%. I could get access to different other plots. But for now, we are only interested in the basic regression output. This is what we see. This is what we have. What interests us really is the equation of the line, which is what we are interested in, in obtaining this line of best fit, right? So the regression line. Notice the intercept right here is available to us straight away. And these are the coefficients that we are keen on looking at. We also have the interest rate percentage, the X or the independent variable and the coefficient for it is available right here uh, minus 23,409 so it's right here so basically we could access our equation of the regression line using these coefficients and intercept right here but something of more importance right here also is the p-value for this independent variable which is something that tells us about the significance of this specific variable and since this p-value is less than the alpha threshold of 0.05, we consider this coefficient to be statistically significant, and we can reject the null hypothesis. Notice the p-values are associated with hypotheses, and if this is less than alpha, then we are rejecting a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, in our case, is that the coefficient's value for interest rate is zero. That's the null hypothesis. So if our p-value is less than alpha, then we can reject the null hypothesis, meaning the coefficient's value is not zero, and which, which brings credibility to this specific value for the coefficient. So this is how we could interpret these p-values p for specific independent variables and conclude their validity in our equation. But this is just an example for one independent variable, interest rate percentage. Notice we only have x. In case where we have more independent variables, it would not be possible to visualize them as such. With one independent variable and one dependent variable, we could have a 2D plot to visualize them. But in the case where we have multiple independent variables contributing to a single dependent variable, it's not possible to visualize them as such. But the regression or the equation can still be computed. So for that, let's look at another data set such as this, where we have 
four independent variables, price per week, population of city, monthly income of riders, and average parking rates per month. All of these contribute to one dependent variable, number of weekly riders. So let's go ahead and compute the regression for this uh, data set and try to find some meaning out of the regression equation. So again, go to data analysis, choose a regression, choose the y range. My y range is the dependent variable right here, holding the shift key, clicking the first and the last cell to select the data range. Input x range, the x range is all of this. This is the top left cell and the bottom right cell holding the shift key and selecting this. So it selects all four of these columns, including the labels. Since I've included the labels in my selection, I will have this as checked here. Uh, I will set up the output range to be here. I want my results to be set up over there, and I'm just going to hit OK. So this gives me my um, regression output. And what I am, again, interested in is understanding which independent variables are of importance to me. So I can see these four independent variables, but what I am also interested in is noticing their p-values. What I can see is that this p-value is less than 0 0.05. Um, this really means 0 0.0000003. So there are six zeros uh, behind this, and then this is a decimal. So you see this um, exponent here looking to highlight this because this is a significant result for us. This happens to be greater than 0 0.05. We're not interested in this independent variable in our final equation. Same goes for this. Uh, this is also uh, on this is on the border line. It's but it is greater than 0 0.05 very strictly speaking, which concludes for us that we could set up our regression equation to be y equals coefficient for this independent variable, right? y equals minus 689.5272 times this variable as it is, prices per week, plus the intercept which is one double zero triple two point five six one which is right here right so the intercept is available to us so this is then the our final equation for this re the, for the regression line for this data set we've got the coefficient for our independent variable and we've got the intercept right here it computes the dependent variable notice the dependent variable is number of weekly riders right so let's just make it uh, number of weekly riders number of weekly riders. So essentially this equation right here sums up our data set or the regression line for this specific case. We could plug in the prices per week to obtain the number of weekly riders as this is the most significant um, independent variable in this regression line. Right, so we have dropped the insignificant ones.